In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take better group photos, even if the only lens you have is a 50mm. So today we're going to talk about taking group photos, which are tricky to begin with, but if all you have is a 50mm, there are some things you got to keep in mind. I'm going to show you five keys for taking great group photos with your 50mm lens. The first thing you need to keep in mind is space. When you're shooting a lot of people, or even four or five people, you're going to need more space. You're going to need to back up, you're going to need space behind them unless you want the background to be an integral part of the image, and you want to be able to frame them so that you're not right up against the edges of the frame and you can crop different later. So this is a great example of leaving yourself enough space. Now if I wanted to, I could crop in later on individual parts of this photo and make multiple photos out of it, but I think it worked great as it is. Second, let's start talking about settings, and specifically I want to talk about aperture and depth of field. The 50 millimeter, the nifty 50, usually uh, the least expensive version is the 1.8, but you can find them in 1.4 or even 1.2, but that means that you're going to have a wide maximum aperture. Don't use it. Don't use your 1.8 aperture to shoot group photos. When you have more than a, one or two people, 1.8 and especially 1.4 or 1.2 is too narrow of a depth of field. Let me give you some examples. If your subject is 20 feet away and you're shooting at 1.8 with your 50 millimeter, you are gonna have a depth of field of about five feet. But if you get closer, get to 10 feet from them, your depth of field is just a little bit over one foot. Now think about a group of people they're not all going to be in that one foot focal plane. It's just not going to work. So I would suggest stopping the lens down to 2, 2.8, something along those lines. Make sure you have enough, enough depth of field to get the entire group in the photo. There's nothing worse than shooting a bunch of group photos, posing them, getting a great shot, and then getting your photo back into the, your uh, computer and realizing that one of the rows or the back row is out of focus. This image is a great example of depth of field. As you can see, this is a photo shoot for a group of dancers, and there's multiple rows here in their pose. I thought the po this pose was great. It made for a great photo, but I had to make sure that I got the people in the back in as uh, clear focus as the people in the front. So I shot this shot at f5.6. That meant, uh, of course, you can see I'm shooting indoors here. That meant I had to crank up the lights to make sure I got enough uh, light on the dancers. But I think it was a good idea to stop down the lens to 5.6. As you can see, I think the photo turned out great and I got everyone in focus. Now, another a quick tip on focusing on groups, aim for the middle, whether that be left and right or forward and back. If you have multiple rows, the middle row is your best bet. If you have two rows of people, aim for the front or focus on the front because most cameras and mo the way most lenses are designed from the focal point you'll have more depth of field behind it uh, behind what you're focusing on than you will in front so if you have multiple rows go for the middle if you only have two rows of people front and back aim for the people in the front when you're focusing now I want to talk a little bit about focal plane focal plane is the line where everything is in focus and that means that a certain distance from your lens is going to be in focus. Take a quick look at this illustration it shows how focal plane works and as you can see because we're talking about the distance from a lens as you go left and right the focal plane is actually curved so if you're shooting really large groups you want to make sure that the ends kind of come a little closer to you that'll give you a better chance to get everyone in focus. So you almost want a, a curve. And it's not an extreme curve, just a little bit of curve, but that'll help you get everyone sharper if you have the, the ends kind of curve in as they're posing. Third, let's talk about shutter speed. Now, shutter speed isn't really related to groups, whether there's 10 people or one person. The lighting and the shutter speed is roughly going to be the same. But there is something to keep in mind when you're shooting a lot of people. Not everyone's going to be still. In fact, the more people you have, the less likely that everyone's going to be still for the shot. So when I'm shooting larger groups, I want to use a faster shutter speed than I normally would use. 
So the general rule in photography is that you want to use at least the reciprocal of the focal length. So for a 50 millimeter, 1 50th of a second or faster is going to make sure you're not getting any blur from the hand holding of the camera. But I like to use a faster shutter speed when I'm shooting groups. So I would suggest, I would recommend at least 1 100th of a second or faster if it's feasible under the conditions. You can go as low as 1 50th of a second with a 50 millimeter, but try to go to 1 100th or even 1 1 60th of a second to make sure that if there's people that are just moving a little bit in the background, the sides, you know, bigger groups, there's always going to be someone that's not standing still. So use a faster shutter speed and you're going to avoid some of that motion blur. Here's an image I shot during the fall. This is a large family photo and in this particular image I shot this at 1 400th of a second. As you can see, there are little kids in the photo. You never know when they're, what they're going to do or where they're going to move, so you want to make sure you have a fast enough shutter speed. This is a great example of that. If you think these tips are helpful, all you have to do is hit that like button below, and it would really help me out. Fourth, let's talk about composition. 50 millimeter is what most people call, or we used to call, a normal lens. And the reason for that is it approximates the field of view that your eyes see on a regular basis. So there's nothing special about the field of view or the perception of a 50 millimeter lens. You don't get that cool distorted wide angle effect that you do if you shoot it like 14 millimeters and you don't get that compression of the background and the subject that you do when you shoot telephoto 100 millimeters or more. So composition actually becomes more important and, and when you're talking about photos or group photos posing becomes more important when you're shooting with a normal lens of 50 millimeter. So spend a little time learning posing. Position people at angles. Don't just line them up shoulder to shoulder. That's boring. Have people do things, have fun. I like to shoot a lot of photos with a group and just have them relax and talk to them and just have them interact. And eventually you're gonna get that one photo that just looks awesome. Another thing to keep in mind with composition is to keep an eye on the edges of the frame. Now, this isn't unique to group photos, but this is something that you should do with every photo that you take. Always kind of scan around the edges of the photo and look to see if there's anything distracting. Branches sticking in, power lines, poles, things like that. Now, you can always remove them later in Photoshop, but if a little repositioning when you're taking the photo gets rid of them, that makes your life a lot easier. So, keep an eye on the edges of the frame. I would, if you have the room, back up a little bit and leave a little breathing room for the people in the photo. You can always crop in later, but you can't crop out later. Here's another family portrait I took. I took this at 50 millimeters, but I backed up a lot and made sure there was a lot of room around them. And we could have zoomed in, or I could have got closer to them and got just the family in the photo, but we got a nice colorful sunset and we got the jetty in the background and I thought it made for a great photo. So I'm glad that I I gave enough room on the edge of the frame and actually ended up cropping in a little bit just to frame it right with those houses on the side and things like that. So giving yourself enough room gives you options later on. Fifth tip is for those of you that are using a crop sensor camera. Crop sensors are great. I actually used a crop sensor camera for the first few years of being a professional photographer. And let me tell you, my clients didn't know the difference between crop sensor and full frame. It's all about taking good photos. but for group photos, the 50 millimeter on a crop sensor camera might be a little too zoomed in. If you're using a crop sensor that uses a 1.5 crop factor, it's actually more like a 75 millimeter lens. So consider picking up a 35 millimeter if you're taking a lot of group photos. That'll give you the, the width without getting too wide or introducing distortion. That'll give you the width to get better group photos without having to be a mile away. A 35 millimeter lens on a crop sensor camera with a 1.5 crop factor will give you approximately the field of view of maybe 52 millimeters. So that's pretty close to a 50 millimeter. So if you're looking for a new lens, 35s are almost as affordable as the nifty 50. So that's a good idea for you crop sensor shooters. Pick up 35 millimeter and you won't be disappointed.